Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Tonight, I am going to be talking to you all about Irish whiskey, at least a little bit of it. Um, here's the deal. I am not going to be able to stream tomorrow, uh, next Friday, so I am going to have to miss all the fun St. Patrick's Day stuff. I will be putting out a special video for St. Patrick's Day. Um, <laughs> people <laughs> saying that the, the costume was already worth the wait. <laughs> Love it. Um, <laughs> all right so i am very dapper yes thank you <laughs> sorry the, the funniest part about doing this is that you know when you're getting everything ready obviously i was a couple minutes late when you're getting everything ready you don't necessarily grasp like this <laughs> and seeing yourself on the stream prior to starting to talk so um, no, I do not have any proper 12 with me today, uh, nor will you likely ever see that on the channel again, unless they put out another version, because I'm totally willing to give them another shot. Um, <laughs> anyway, all right, so here's the deal. I'm going to be doing a little bit of a, a fun thing for myself, because I have had some Napog Castle, or Napog Castle. I'm sure I'm going to keep saying Napog instead of Napog, because I'm a guy from Massachusetts and mispronouncing thing is what I do. So I have the 12. I have a sample of the 14, or you call it a nip around here. Um, and then we have a 16 as well. And I'm going to do all three because why the heck not? Um, I also have a couple of other special things over there, but I wanted to uh, just kind of get into this stuff. I actually really like Napog Castle, um, especially the 12, which is the only one I've had so far. But so far, I've really enjoyed the taste, as you can tell. I've drank a little bit of it. Um, I know it's funny to think, you know, any of you on the stream looking at a bottle like this and thinking that I uh, have drank any of it um, must not seem normal. But you got to keep in mind, I go through a lot of different bottles. Um, I would guess that if you look at Scott, uh, who I just saw you popped in, Scott, hey, how's it going? Um, I would guess if you looked at most of his bottles, they're probably about three quarters full as well. All right. So let's see who's in the chat before I, uh... oh yeah, only if it doesn't suck. Um... <laughs> oh no, there's STDs. <laughs> um, so I see Christine Deems is in the, in the chat. I want to thank her. She is my newest patron. So thank you very much, Christine. That was about a, uh, maybe 20 minutes ago she, she signed up. Um, just want to see what's going on in the chat, see if anybody's trying to get my attention. And it does not look so. So um, other than normal, just saying hi. So here's the deal. I want to know. I'm just going to put this right out there at the start. Do you guys have any uh, particular Irish whiskey that you're planning on drinking for St. Patrick's Day? Um, something that you have kind of already considered, hey, you know what, that's going to be the day. That's going to be the dream. Or if you don't, think about it now. See what you get. All right, let's pour some stuff. So this is the Tua glass. I'm sure most of you have seen this because I uh, just did a video on it a couple days ago and it's actually performing very well. Um, so thank you to anybody who's watched it. But um, to that end, I would guess that anybody who bothers to come to the stream probably has seen the video. Here. Eh, not a great, not a great pop, but it's got a little bit missing. So anyway, I'm going to pour some in this to a glass. Um, I've been trying to give it more and more of a chance. As I kind of said in the video, it's not that it's bad. Um, it's just, it doesn't, it's... For what I do on this channel, it's not as good as the Glencairn. So I'll just leave it at that. But I'm going to start off with this anyway because I did kind of promise myself I was going to try it more over the course of the month and uh, you know see if it grew on me. I do genuinely like holding it. So all right, we've got a few uh, few answers coming in here. So let me just kind of go over these. So we got Jameson Castmate Stout. I've seen a lot of people have been recommending I review that one, and maybe I will. Um, I would love to do the, the cask, uh, cask mates. Um, I know there's two of them, and, and I would like to do those, but red breast cask strength. Jeez, you guys don't mess around. All right, Middleton Bluebell Forest, <laughs> proper 12. Teeling Single Malt and Jameson's Castmate Stout. All right. Uh, where's the Pabst Blue Ribbon Whiskey? Yeah, so actually I have that in my show notes here just in case I, I needed something to talk about. So we'll, we'll talk that, about that in a little bit. Um, you're drinking ca Jameson's right now. Wow, a lot of people with the uh, Jameson's. So Green Spot, nice for St. Patrick's Day. That makes a lot of sense. So uh, whis oh, oh, that's I Whiskey She Wants. Um, so I got a question for you. Uh, have you tried the Yellow Spot yet? Um, I know the red spot just came out, and I would guess most of you have not tried that. But those of you who have tried the green spot, have you tried the yellow spot? Because in my opinion, they're dramatically different. And 
a good example of how kind of an, uh, a more expensive version of, or expression is totally worth the extra money. Um, to me, I think around here, uh, green spot somewhere around $80 or maybe 75 and I think around 80 and then the yellow spots about 110. So, I mean, it's about $30 more and I, I find it, it's worth it. I like, I like the extra, um, I like the extra butteriness that you get out of the yellow spot. So, Hmm. See, that does smell good. Have, have you guys all had uh, Napog Castle? I would guess that a lot of you have, um, I will be reviewing this later on in the in the month. All right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and give a. Um, I guess you know what today is International Women's Day, so cheers to all of my female viewers. So cheers to you. Hmm. It's good. <laughs> it's tasty. Um, I'm mostly just hanging out drinking with you guys. I've got some stuff to talk about tonight, but uh, it's, it's definitely a little fruity. Um, it's got a little bit of a, what do you want to call it? It's like, you know how sometimes on the episodes I refer to kind of like two different types of honey. You've got the honey that you might get if you were to, you know, just buy like a teddy bear full of honey. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about. Those the ones that you buy at the grocery store. And then you got like the real honey that you might buy at like, you know, some uh, farmer's market or like somebody who happens to, what is a beekeeper called? I forget. Somebody who happens to keep bees um, and sells it on the side of the road or something. Maybe maybe that's just this area, but I suspect not. Uh, either way, th those are the two different types of honey that I tend to find. And the the more raw, like that, that farmer's market honey is more what I'm getting out of this. So, hmm. Scott, you're drinking the, the Pog 14? I'm glad to hear it. Or is that is that what you're uh, having um, for St. Patrick's Day? Having a pint of beer. Nice. I've actually, it's funny, I got a beer on the table back there. I totally forgot I was drinking it. And then I uh, got all excited about the stream and totally just left it on the on the table. That's fine. I'll drink it later. It'll be, it'll, <laughs> they're saying that a person who keeps bees is called a beekeeper. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate that, James. <laughs> mm. So here's one thing that I didn't talk about with the tealing glass that at least I don't think I did. So let's say I'm going to do this to the side because I think this might make you guys be able to, to see it. And I get that this is a minor problem, right? But while I'm drinking it, if you happen to exhale at all, this glass fogs up like crazy. So it's like no, you can't. You can't pick it up. If you not that you're usually exhaling into your glass, but when you're when it's big enough that your nose pretty much just goes right in, it's uh, it's an inevitability, and it's kind of weird. Hey, thanks, Scott. What's that? What did Dylan do? Scotch his tummies after the week I've had. I'm willing to haggle. Okay. Well, Dylan, I'm sorry you had a tough week. I'm right there with you, buddy. <laughs> it's actually um, part of the reason that I'm doing a stream tonight. I wasn't planning on it originally, but. Uh, drinking on a Friday night with you guys seemed like a good idea after the week I had. I can't go into too many details because it's like business stuff, but it was it was a rough one. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate it. <laughs> but try not to be too much of a neck beard with my little. I, I'm gonna not even call this thing a fedora. It's a. Uh, I guess it's kind of a fedora, but I don't care. It's like a like a. This has got to be a better name for this hat. I'm not gonna call it a fedora because screw that. <laughs> Dan, pinky up, pinky up with the tealing doesn't doesn't work that well. It's mm, yes. Mm. <laughs> it's it's fun being able to see yourself on the stream, just being an idiot. All right, so what do we got? Hmm. Photo evidence of Discord. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Um, I think Rob, was that you that that bought a shirt tonight, or was that a? Uh, yeah, um, I think it was Rob bought a bought a shirt in the Discord um, and posted a picture of it in the Discord, so he now has the Whiskey Dick shirt. I'd love to know if you're actually wearing it right now. Although I gotta say, when these shirts come in the mail, I don't know what the heck they clean it with right before it goes out the door, but it stinks. It smells like vinegar or something. You gotta wash them first. Not that you wouldn't anyway, but you just you gotta. They stink. Um, yeah, call it an awesome hat. I will call it an awesome hat. Hmm. <laughs> 
for those of you that don't know, um, I Whiskey She Wines has a channel on YouTube as well. Pretty entertaining stuff. Uh, you should check it out if you haven't already. But an idiot. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Would you guys... Uh, hold on one sec. I'm not leaving for too long. Just hold on one sec. I gotta get something. All right. Got it. So let's go ahead and pour a little bit more of this 12 because this is going away a little fast here. Do, do, do. And let's see. But drink a whiskey out of your hat. Well, I won't just drink a whiskey out of my hat, but I will. There we go. Have a nice. Uh, it's not going to focus. Have a nice green whiskey. <laughs> So, uh, yes, three drops of food coloring really brings out the nose in your whiskey. Hmm. <laughs> that is a big pour. I do only big pours, buddy. It's, um, the, I will say that's another thing about the teeling that is both good and bad. It's wider than a Glencairn, so it's, uh, it's very easy to pour too much. Hmm. Yeah, this was a good decision. I like having a green dram. <laughs> Scott, thank you. Hey, Deadpool. I love Deadpool. What kind of barrel was that? <laughs> a really moldy one. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, all right. So there was a an event that happened near me very recently at... Um, Okay, cool. People were <laughs> saying that my teeth was going to turn going to turn green. All right, there was an event, a tragic, tragic event near me. Um, you could tell by my voice I'm very serious. Uh, in, I think it was Westboro, Massachusetts, over the last couple of days, there was a tractor trailer filled with whiskey that turned over and spilled everywhere. And my wife told me this. I actually had no idea, but it stopped her on her ride home from, from work. So... You know, I asked her because I was very curious, as any one of you would be, because I wanted to know how sad to be about that much of a waste. So I said, what kind of whiskey was it? And she said, oh, well, actually, I couldn't see, but uh, I listened to the radio and they said it was Fireball whiskey. And I just was, I couldn't have been more relieved. <laughs> hmm. Is it moving around a lot? Yeah, it is moving around a lot. <laughs> it's uh, got a little elastic thing, so it's pretty tight on there. Let's, uh, mm, yes. I got this from the dollar store. The minute I put it on, the very first time I put it on, it just snapped immediately. <laughs> um, get it? No, I did not get any samples, nor would I want them. Although I, I can only imagine it might taste better with a little bit of dirt residue in there. A little road, a little road tar. Ah, <sighs> num num num. <laughs> mm. That's so good. Oh man, I really really like Napog. As far as uh, Irish whiskeys go, I just feel like it has a lot of character, especially for a triple distilled. Now, here's the problem. I I haven't done my actual review yet. I haven't filmed it, um, so I haven't researched everything about this whiskey yet. But I did look up a little bit of stuff. So, uh, basically, I think. In like the late 1500s, or there, there's a castle called Napog Castle, and it was essentially derelict. It was just totally broken down and, and whatever. And around 19, it was from the 1500s. Around 1961, if I remember correctly, a man and a woman bought it, and the the wife ended up being she was like this pretty talented architect. So they repaired the the castle. And then they went out and they sourced a bunch of whiskey and they aged it themselves. And then, um, you know, over years, that's what they sold. And then they started doing their own stuff. Uh, this is all, conge uh, not conjecture, this is all, this is basically what it says on their website. So I haven't researched and fact-checked any of this. So take it for what it's worth. Um, they, uh, they ended up aging their own stuff. It's all triple distilled. You know, they kind of go into what they do there. Nothing out of the ordinary, just kind of the, the, the normal. They do make a big deal about, you know, cutting out the head and the tail and, and then triple distilling it and everything. So, um, and then they, uh, they age it. So based off the, the time that they kind of repaired the castle, it wouldn't surprise me if this was in fact theirs, but I've been fooled before. Um, oh, I have a funny story. So, uh, I guess I'll say shout out to uh, to Jim from um, 
uh, Flaming Leprechaun. So him and I have become uh, friends a bit. And, you know, we, we talk every now and then about whiskey and stuff. He lives around this area. He's he's kind of promoting his product. And um, it's him and this other guy that, that own uh, Flaming Leprechaun, or at least have a, a pretty major stake in it. So anyway, I think I got that wrong. He's, he's like a marketing guy, right? So um, anyway, he calls me up the other day, just out of the blue. I had actually forgotten he even had my phone number. And I was just like, huh, this is weird. Why, why is he calling me? So I pick it up. Hey, Jim, what's going on? And he's like, hey, I was just watching your proper 12 video. And uh, I don't know if anybody told you, but they, they uh, sourced that whiskey from Bushmills. <laughs> and I was like, hey, Jim, did you happen to look at how many views that video has? And he's like, no. I'm like, oh, it was over, over 500,000 or something like that. And he was just like, oh, okay. I was like, did you see how many comments it had? He's like, no. I'm like, well, several thousand. It's like, oh, okay. And I'm like, I would guess about half of them are correcting me on the Bushmills thing. <laughs> but I maintain, and I do have the email to prove it, that their original marketing stuff said that they had their own distillery. Um, I think they backed out of that story real fast when people learned, but either way, you know, I, I looked a little bit silly on the video, but it was off of information that I had. So, oh, well, shame on them. Hmm. Uh, so let's see, what do we got going on here? How many people? We got 69 people in here. Nice. Um, at least that's what it looks like anyway. The, uh, YouTube thing has a, a leaves a lot to be desired as far as letting me know what's actually going on with the stream. So, all right. Speaking of other whiskeys, did you guys see about uh, Pabst Blue Ribbon PBR doing their own whiskey? I am intrigued, to say the least. Not a huge fan of PBR. Not exactly against PBR. I mean, it's not great. It's certainly not great. Um, but I think it could be interesting. Um, they say aged five seconds, which eh, whatever. It just means that they're, they haven't explored the market yet and seen if they're actually going to be able to get anybody. Hmm. So I'm getting a request. Um, so anybody who happens to be watching this, it's actually still within the first like 15, 20 minutes. So a lot of people are still watching this. If you are not subscribed to Eric Waits channel, you should absolutely subscribe to him. He actually does a stream right before mine, and uh, he's always giving me shout outs and everything too. So by all means, I should be returning the favor. But more importantly, the guy knows a ton about whiskey. He's like like a legit just student of pretty much anything he puts his mind to. He's a big wine guy. He's a big whiskey guy. And uh, he's, he's very, very knowledgeable and very entertaining as well. Um, anyway, so definitely check out his channel. He's super close to 1,000 subs, so I would love it if we could get him there. All right. Mm. <laughs> ah, green whiskey. I can't tell you how long I've been looking forward to having this 14 and the 16. I got these a while ago, actually. Um, Napog. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't them. I think it was like a distributor or something. Just sent me sent me this bottle and then these two samples. Um, and I basically I had planned on reviewing this whiskey like months ago, and I just haven't gotten around to it. It's very. It's a very good problem to have but i have a lot of whiskeys i have to get through and uh the back it gets backed up even at two two videos a week um anyway so i very much wanted to drink these because i really liked this one as soon as i opened it and i, I want to get into these i also want to make sure i get to them before i fry my taste buds on green whiskey so to that end <laughs> eric you're gonna you're gonna wear the power glove then what am i gonna wear <laughs> We'll see if that uh, see if that comes back out in a little bit. I kind of wanted to actually do the things proper, despite the hat and the um, the hat and the bow tie. I wanted to be a little bit more formal tonight, since I'm trying something I actually really want to try. All right, so this is the Napog Castle 14. I know very very little about what this is, so I do have the nosing and tasting notes. That's a heavy pour. Um, oh. One more thing, and I realize I'm like totally uh, spastic over here, all over the place. But um, after the stream, basically every time, uh, me and like six, seven other people, there, I have a Discord. You can find the link down in the description. Like six, seven other people, we all get in there, and there's a voice chat area, and um, you can go in there, and we all just kind of have a conversation after the fact. Usually, I'm packing up all my gear and just kind of chatting, and it's it's pretty fun. It's a good like after show. Um, so definitely consider joining us because it's, it's pretty fun and it'd be nice to have more people there. 
All right, the whiskey dick. Did you get a bottle of Eric Waits Ardberg? Uh, Ardberg, I'm sorry, Ardbeg Drum CR. I did not. Um, I talked to a guy I know at Ardbeg to see what they wanted to do as far as marketing on that. Um, and I basically told him, I'm like, you know, the committee release, I'm sure is delicious, but are they planning on making it a mainline thing? He said, not really, but they're testing the waters a little bit. And um, I think around June or so, they're going to re re-release the drum. So you guys might have a little bit uh, more of a chance to pick some up if you didn't get a chance. It won't be the committee release per se, but it will be a more formal release, similar to what they did with the grooves. You know, it was available for a little bit and then it went away and then it came back. You can usually find it right now. Um, so keep that in mind if you are interested in trying it and can't find your can't find it. Um, I do use Irish whiskeys for my uh, my Irish coffee, which I make very frequently now. After making that video, I'd say I probably have like two or three of them a month, um, which you know that's that's a good amount considering I really only drink coffee at home on the weekends. So anyway, all right, this is the fourteen, and this is what I'm gonna do. I have um, I think. Let's see if I can do this properly this time. Uh, do, do, do. Here we go. All right, let me change the window. I am going to have you guys do this along with me a little bit. And boom. Nope. Yeah, I give up. Never mind. I don't want to waste time doing that. All right, so I have the nosing and tasting notes here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of do it along with myself because um, I never get a chance to do this. <laughs> All right. So this says that the aroma is going to be apple and apricot, and the taste is going to be rich in flavor with fruity, nutty, and vanilla notes. So not terribly complex. Let's see how how it goes for me. Hmm. Hold on. Boy, you have to kind of go deep there. Um, it's it's very light. Like every note out of there is very mild. You kind of have to search for it a bit. It's rare that I'll smell something and right away not pick up something. Um, and I, I don't think my nose is, is stuffy or fried or anything from the, the 12. It's definitely not. So. Um, the whiskey I had with the leprechaun was called Flaming Leprechaun, and uh, I, I liked that one a lot. I drank the whole the whole bottle, used it. That was the one I used for the Irish whiskey. Oh, sorry, Irish coffee. Hmm. Um, sure, Eric, that sounds good. Maybe you can come out to San Diego again next time I come out. I think I'm coming back out around uh, mid-April or so. So I will almost certainly end up going to the whiskey house again. Uh, so if anybody here in the chat would be interested in meeting in San Diego, just let me know or send me send me a message because it'd be it'd be cool to have more people come out this time. So I can't say that I'm getting a whole heck of a lot, like, certainly a lot less than I would expect. I don't I, I think I'm seeing what they're talking about with the apricot, but I'm not getting the apple at all. All right, let's go ahead and give this a taste. Cheers. Okay, taste makes up for it. <laughs> oh, that's oh, that gets really good. Oh, don't you love when a whiskey is good to start off with, and you're already impressed, and then the finish just just knocks it out of the park. Oh, I love that. Oh, it's so nice. All right, the fourteen is is so far getting a, a big thumbs up for me. Um, I have no idea what price point is, but the apricot in the taste. Uh, which is also kind of ironic because apricot was not in the tasting notes. It was in the nosing notes. Um, but I am tasting it full full bore. That's really actually very good. Hmm. Nightlark. Hmm. I'm booked all April, but I may be in San Diego on business the last week of September. Okay. I can probably plan to be out there in September. Let's uh, let's figure it out. I um, I can almost certainly plan to be out there in September. Um, wow, this is really good. I'm going to enjoy the heck out of this. You guys can just sit there and watch me. I'm just going to sit here quietly and, and enjoy my drink. Pinky up with my, with my dapper hat. <laughs> mm. So I think I realized what happens. I laugh all the time. I'm generally a very happy guy. And uh, that's when the glass gets fogged up. So I take it back about the... Uh, the uh, two, uh, two, 
oh my gosh, Tua. I take it back about the Tua. I think it's just bound to happen when you laugh while you're having a sip. <sighs> Grand Moff Tarkin, oh my gosh. <laughs> I find your lack of faith. No, shoot, that's Darth Vader. Oops. Um... Well, I know Leia's quote to him. I'm trying to think. Ah, I can't remember any of his quotes. I can remember almost every conversation that's had around him. I can't remember anything he says other than criticizing Vader, which is a bold move. So. Mm. Hey, Scott. Um, I noticed that you did a new compass box the other day, and I forget what the name of it was. But if you have any videos that you'd like to plug, and actually the same goes for anybody else, because people watching this in the future, um, they... Uh, they, you know, see the chat and whatever. If you have any video, if you are a whiskey tuber, or if you're not, if you're just anything and you want to plug a video, go ahead and post it in here. I will approve them all. Hey, BD, what's going on? So BD Ling is an older gentleman, as I would like to say, a refined and uh, man of experience. <laughs> and him and I have been having some conversations. He's just getting into bourbon. So to that end, here's the deal. I, I recommended that he hop on to Woodford Reserve. Um, and really, you know, he, I think he had a bottle of it already, but I told him that that, that was a good one. Um, he has a couple of other bottles, but I would love to hear what you guys think would be great starter bourbons for um, BD Ling. Hmm. Stranger and Stranger, that's what it was called. Yep. Let's see, what else? Charming as always. Uh, do, do, do. I always get apricot from Bushmills. Yeah. Um, so tomorrow, tomorrow's video is on, um, Bushmills Black Bush, which reminds me, I have to do the early release to the patrons. Um, I'll have to do that right after this video. Um, so, well, the double, wo the double oaked, I'm always hesitant to tell a, a newer bourbon drinker to have that because I feel like the oak is generally overpowering in that one. And if, if you don't know that you like oaky flavor, it would potentially drive some people away. Um, all right, so Buffalo Trace. Yeah, that's a really good answer, actually. It's, I'm surprised I didn't even think to tell him that. Um, <laughs> uh, Buffalo Trace, uh, Starter Bourbon Larceny. That's a great one. Yep. Um, so, so BD Larceny is about a $20 bottle. Uh, Bourbon Sane says, I'll be reviewing several Irish whiskeys upcoming, but they'll be starting to tell more do. Great. Eagle Rare. Eagle Rare is good. I'm not sure that I, I guess I would consider that a, a kind of a starter bourbon, but I feel like that one's, that one's good to the point where I would hate to start somebody there and have them be like, okay, what's next? What's better than this? Cause then you, you already kind of skipped a step. You know what I mean? Um, all right. So let's see. Wild Turkey. Rare breed, okay. Henry McKenna, ten year, monkey shoulder, Bourbons, Lisa. <laughs> um, Black Bush is great. All right, people. I don't think people listen. Uh, bourbon specifically. So Elijah Craig Woodford. Damn it, YouTube notices. Oh, ah, she flung dung. Well, I'm glad you came anyway. I'll tell you, she flung dung. It's pretty much every Friday at 9 p.m. What else? We just picked up our top five easy to find bourbons under $30 for 2019. Uh, Great. So uh, BD, you might be able to find something good under I Whiskey She Wines. Um, so uh, She Flung Dung, I've been going for 30 minutes roughly. You haven't missed a whole lot other than my awesome hat. And uh, I dyed some whiskey green. <laughs> I'm doing the Napog uh, 12 and 14, and then I'm going to work my way over to the 16 as well. All right, so BD, if you can't find something out of that list, I think you are uh, you might not have a whole lot of luck. <laughs> what I suggest is having them all. Mm. And if you feel like entertaining an audience, then you just mix them all together on, on a live stream. That always goes very well. All right, so let's see. Old Granddad, yep, yep. Mount Gay. Mount Gay, Gay is rum, isn't it, James? So here's a question. What does everybody have against Maker's Mark? I never understand why that gets so much hate. I really don't, because I, I actually genuinely liked it a lot, especially for what it is. Like, it's one of those things that's always there. It's very it's very uh, approachable, and maybe that has something to do with it. But, like, I've never had Maker's Mark and wished it was something else. Um, so, Eric, funny that you ask. I think it did. Um, Eric asked me if the dye actually affected the taste. As soon as I took that first sip, 
The problem is in a blind tasting, I don't think I would have noticed. So I can't rule out the fact that it was just a, a mental impression, but I, I do know for a fact that I did not think ahead of time, hey, this might taste different. I just kind of had a sip and it, it almost tasted a little bit flatter, if that makes any sense. Um, almost muted, which I don't think that, I don't think dye has a flavor. But anyway, so yeah, I do think it made a difference. Okay. People tend to like Maker's Mark in here. Interesting. I hate Maker's Mark, and when I got into bourbon, it was at about 20 a lot more expensive than some 10-year-old bourbons at $10 or less. It's better value today, but legacy. Um, it was way too grainy and alcohol forward for me. Fake cherry flavor as well for me. So that's funny bourbon saying, because I, I didn't find it too grainy or alcohol forward, but I did get a lot of that cherry. And I find that to me, that's something I liked, especially starting out. Because, I mean, cherry is a generally acceptable flavor. You know, most people will like that. Um, so I, I do usually recommend Maker's Mark as a, as a starter, especially with a, just being a weeded bourbon. It's, it's, it's like an easier flavor, kind of. It's a little, a little nicer. A little, I guess if you were to take corn, you would say it's sweeter. If you take wheat, I would say it's, it's like, <laughs> it's like friendlier. <laughs> it's almost like, like it, it's, it's like it mellow. It's like, it's more mellow. I, I don't know how else to describe it. Um, Eric likes to make cornbread with Maker's Mark. The distillery tour is awesome. The private select is phenomenal. I agree with that. I got a bottle of uh, private select sent to me by a viewer, actually, and, and it's very, very good. It's one that I, I bust out for, for special occasions. So. Hmm. so this 14 is very good. Over time, though, the, um, the apricot definitely fades a little bit, but even that sip, like I can taste it right away. Um, but it's not nearly, <laughs> it's not nearly as, um, prominent as that first sip. Uh, hey, blah, blah, meh, meh. <laughs> what's going on? Cheers to you, my friend. Uh, it tasted like cherry cough syrup to me. Interesting. I, I didn't get it that strong, but that it's been a little while since I've had makers. Maybe I should try it again. One video that I've been considering actually remaking lately is my Jameson video, my original Jameson video, uh, only because I feel like I could do better. Um, you know, obviously the camera equipment's better and my, my general demeanor on camera is better, but I feel like that's a slippery slope because if I start reviewing things I've already reviewed, first off, like you guys already kind of know my opinion of it, but like it might be fun to revisit a few whiskeys that I've already tasted, but I don't know, we'll see. All right, so Bourbon Saints pouring a dram of Maker's Mark just to see see if his opinion has changed. <laughs> a little tip. Yes, a milady. <laughs> God, that even that makes me cringe. Mm. Does the bow squirt water? Uh, no, there's no flower in the middle. <laughs> but it does spin. It goes, Wheesh. yeah, no, that totally didn't work. I'm going to break this damn thing. It's so cheap. I stopped by the dollar store to get something completely unrelated, and then I, I noticed this bow, and I immediately was like, I need to wear that on a live stream. It needs to happen. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Jameson is for frat boy shots, but it's also kind of, it's, I think I've got a little nostalgia for it. Um, if you guys, maybe you haven't seen the video, but I, uh, I love, I love the story. So during my bachelor party, um, my bachelor party was at this really cool house on a beach and my, my brother-in-law kind of set this whole thing up and I think I had like maybe six or seven friends all stay over and then my dad was there and my father-in-law, um, to be was there and, uh, my brother-in-law to be was there as well. Um, but my, my dad or some, I think my brother-in-law had told everybody, he said, you know what? Bill likes whiskey. If you want to bring anything, bring a bottle of whiskey for Bill to take home. And so I got a few things, including an Angel's Envy, which I, I actually remember liking a lot. I haven't reviewed it on the uh, <laughs> I haven't reviewed it on the channel yet. Um, anyway, so my father-in-law brought me a bottle of Jameson, and it was a small bottle. It was like like the size of a beer bottle. And later in the night, excuse me, later in the night, we were on the beach around a big fire. 
and there were, um, you know, we were all standing there just drinking beers, or whatever. And my brother-in-law hands me the bottle of Jameson. I couldn't see because it was dark and I was pretty drunk. And says, "Hey, Bill, here's another beer." And so I just, you know, I open it and I turn it up and I just go, 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 oh. And I realized what I had done. I looked down and everybody, of course, was cracking up at me. Um, at that point, I decided that it might be a fun idea to try to jump over the fire. And they stopped, they stopped me. <laughs> now, that was, a, that was a good trick. If you, anybody ever wants to play a trick on your friend, wait until they drink a little bit too much. And then hand them a bottle of uh, small Jameson and tell them it's a beer. I, I, you know, take care of them afterwards. But that's a pretty funny, funny trick. Mm. All right, so Bourbon Sane. Um says that the nose smells young, grain-forward still, and definitely a fake medicinal cherry note stings the nostrils. <laughs> now, how does it taste, though, Bourbon Sane? I've thought about doing re-reviews. Ralphie does re-reviews of the exact same bottle. Interesting. <laughs> hey, DH Self. What's going on? DJ Baker. All right. Uh, Jameson will always remind me of the job that changed my life career. Oh, that's cool. Working for this tech company, one of the managers always brought Jameson shots with pickle juice chasers. What do you What do you guys think about uh, the pickle juice chaser? The problem is I don't like pickles. And, and I try a pickle probably like once every six months just to see if I like it yet. Because people that like pickles love pickles. I just can't get, I can't get behind them. Um, so Maritime U.S. is asking if people in Ireland drink Jameson or is it fairly Americanized? My understanding is that they do, but feel free anybody to correct me. Um, it's mostly just like drinking is such a, such a thing over there that it becomes kind of not a thing. So I, I have yet to meet an Irish person who is pretentious about what they drink. So, you know, the way that, that we all are sitting here in my... My shiny hat, my bow tie, and my Nepog castle. Hmm. All right, so the 14 went away. Um, that was a little sad because that was very, very good. I'm going to put that over there. Hmm, over. I'm going to put it. All right, I'll just put it there. All right, so next I'm going to go to the 16. But first, I'm going to drink a little bit of water because I want to I want to make sure I'm good to go for the 16 because I, I have a feeling this is going to be significantly better. OK, so Bourbon Sane says that it's much better than the neck pour. Uh, he'll say that still bright cherry forward, but drinks much smoother than it did on when he initially uh, had it. So <laughs> what's wrong with me? <laughs> what are you talking about, Brandon? <laughs> I'm guessing you're referring to the outfit. Are you not entertained? <laughs> Eric, wait, I sure as hell hope not. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's see. What are you guys? So it's been a while since I've asked. I'm sure a lot of you are on your second dram. What are you guys going to join me here with my 16? First off, here's a question. Does anybody in the chat have uh, Napog 16? <laughs> old farm show <laughs> that typo just uh made your made your comment get get uh flagged i had to approve it <laughs> he said he grew up on prickles <laughs> all right so let me power out the 16 do 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 glug 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 ding 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 all right so the 16 let's see so they go triple distilled all the way up, which makes sense. Student loan debt, that's not a thing that you can drink, although you can drink because of it. <laughs> okay, so I don't think anybody out there has any... Uh... Okay, somebody, somebody's trying to correct me here. Kenapogi? No, Kenap... I don't... I don't think so, Charles. I was uh, I, I checked the website before this because I wanted to make sure I pronounced it properly. Because I I've been calling it Napog, and they basically pronounce it Napog. Um, no, I'm not. Well, maybe I'll shoot it. We'll see. We'll see, Scott. Um, all right. So let me let me read off what they say about the. Uh, I really kind of want to get this to go because I think it's a I think it's a slick thing when this works. Give me give me just a sec. Here we go. All right, so check this out. Boom. All right. Here is, I'm going to make this bigger so you guys can see it. 
All right, so it says it's aromatic, malty, and fruity, and the taste is deep and complex with sherry maltiness along with fruity and slightly sweet notes. Interesting. Okay, so is it finished in, in sherry? Um, 14 years in bourbon barrels, then finished in Oloroso sherry casks. Okay, so this is going to be tasty. Um, this adds nutty and complex sherry notes. Interesting. All right, let's go back to... Oops. Uh, get rid of that. Cool. All right, so let's see what we got. So Richie Z has a bottle, but it's lost among dozens of bottles. None are shelved, so I pour the bread, bread breast. Okay, fair enough. Knop Castle is bushy. Yeah. Uh, okay. See, that's that's the thing, Danny. I gotta I gotta re, um, check into this because it's tough. Like you can't trust websites. That's the one thing I've really learned doing this. Well, there's a lot of things I've learned doing this channel, but that is one consistent thing. Websites lie all the time. Um, you really have to. Like I call places sometimes. I talk to their um, I talk to their their gift shops sometimes because those people they obviously want to support the brands, but oftentimes they're just kind of like seasonal workers and they don't have a whole lot invested. So if you ask the right questions, do a little social engineering, you can get answers that you wouldn't expect. Um, that is a thing I definitely do from time to time. I don't always call like Ireland <laughs> because you know money. Um, and just long distance calls and whatnot. But, you know, sometimes, especially with like bourbon, uh, let's, uh, sorry, like bourbon distilleries. Jeez, I couldn't remember the word distillery. It's getting late, I guess. All right, let's go into the 16. So, Florence, I'm very sorry that you feel that way, but I appreciate that you tuned into a whiskey live stream <laughs> just to tell us that whiskey is disgusting. So what is um what is Scott talking about here? Sorry, I'm gonna be quiet for a second. I just want to read this. Scott, what are you talking about? You missed that Scott Price uh, picked Makers as the best bourbon in twenty. Okay, all right, <laughs> all right. So let's uh let's go ahead and give this a nose. Hmm. That is interesting. It's It's got some characteristics of, of bourbon for sure, which makes sense. Ex-bourbon barrel for 14 years, it's going to. Um, the, sh the sherry's not coming across a whole lot, but I think what it's doing is it's mingling with the bourbon and, excuse me, it is dulling some of the oak characteristics that you would typically get on a nose. And it is introducing kind of a mellowness that you get with just a fruity whiskey. Let me Let me see. Hmm. <laughs> Florence, I'm not sensitive. I don't give a crap. Hmm. Dramatically different than the, the 12 and the 14, which is kind of what I would expect at this point. It does taste very sherry. Um, not the, like, a fruity red wine type of sherry you know how you like you can kind of you can kind of have different types of sherry sometimes sherry just presents itself as more of a red wine flavor um other times it's more of like a fruity red wine flavor this is much more in the like a drier flavor um dry red wine <laughs> no reference no get away <laughs> object not set to an instance of an object no object not set to an instance of a yeah of an object Value? Maybe? I, I don't remember. Either way, screw you, null reference. <laughs> Tired of you. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> He's here for the giant sparkly bow tie. Aren't we all? All right. So here's the question. Um, so you guys watched my, uh, you guys watched my, my things you need to know about Irish whiskey, right? Well, actually, so here's a better question. What do you guys think of the new thumbnails? I was talking in Discord about this last night, and and people seem to think that they didn't, or people didn't like them as much, but I personally do. Um, not only because they're a little bit easier to make, but also just I feel like it's good for a change. 
Uh, my intent is to do the same style of thumbnail with slightly different colors depending on the type of whiskey that I'm reviewing. So I'm curious to know what you guys all think. <laughs> 401 error or 404 DH Silv? As long as it's not a 403. <laughs> Teeling small batch is nice for the price. Uh, Scott, you're here for the Booker shot, Booker's shots. I actually, I'm going to a party tomorrow night and I'm planning on bringing a bottle of Booker's. And uh, I would say that, that there's going to be a good portion of, of people there that are about 10 years younger than me. And then, you know, any variety of people in between. Um, and I can't wait to introduce them to Booker's. <laughs> so my intent is to bring a bottle and not leave with it. So let's see how that goes. That'll be super fun. <laughs> hmm. See you later, uh, whiskey. If you keep having 404s, it'll hit your 401 can. <laughs> All right. Go away, DH self. <laughs> you and I can nerd out later. The new logo on the screen. Yeah, the thumbnail. Um, the, the green, you know, um, not not the logo, uh, the just the look at look at my previous couple videos. You'll you'll know what I'm talking about. Don't let them shoot that shit. I don't know what you're talking about. When is the next Booker's batch coming out? That's a good question. Thanks, Richie. Appreciate that. The dictionary in the middle is almost too little to figure out what it is. Oh, well, I mean, that's that's just here. Um, I mean, I could make that bigger for sure. Boom. Ha! Huh. I'm a whiskey dictionary. <laughs> you know, I've tried to do that before, and it didn't actually change the screen at all. And I'm, I looked like an idiot. Um, so I hope that worked. <laughs> I should just do the rest of the stream with that thing sitting right in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, did Chris at Bourbon Sane uh, ask about your floating icons? Oh, don't let the younglings shoot it. Yeah, no, they're not going to shoot it. They know better. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad that you... I'm glad that worked. I'm totally just going to... There we go. Ugh. All right. So let's let's do this. <laughs> All right. I'm going to leave that there. I am... <laughs> That's enough whiskey. I it's really hard to stay behind this thing, so I'm not going to. All right. So anyway, let's talk about a couple more things. Um, what else we got? Oh yeah. So uh, you guys saw the uh, the Buffalo Trace, the the Sazerac warehouse there. Um, ended up uh, dumping what 120 thousand gallons of, of whiskey. What a what a sad thing. It is kind of my challenge coin. It's the same. It's the same. Actually, no, it's it's not. The challenge coin is my old logo, which is totally out of focus here. Um, uh, it's not gonna work. Challenge coin is the old logo. The newest challenge coin that will be being printed pretty soon. Um, I need to sell a few more of them. Uh, that will be the new logo and a really really funny thing on the backside, which I'm I'm pretty excited about. I do still have some coins. Um, I have actually quite a few coins left. I think somewhere like seventy five of them. Um, I would love to sell them because I really want to do more batch, uh, another batch. I, I want to get down to about 50 left before I print the second batch. No, I did not chug a bottle. <laughs> and, and I think you guys are misinterpreting my current mental state. It's more of a, I'm just happy it's Friday. Like I was saying at the beginning of the stream, it was a tough week for me. I, I spent the last two days on like emergency phone calls um, a good amount of the time, and that's always really stressful. So sitting here on a Friday night, no real responsibilities over this weekend other than like taking my kids to gymnastics. Like I'm pretty pretty mellow and pretty relaxed right now. It's just a fun time, and I'm glad to hang out and drink with you guys. <laughs> DH Silva, I won't send you free ones, but I'll cut you a good deal if you want a couple of them. Hey, cool, Chris. I'm actually going out to... I, I can ship them out tomorrow morning. So if you get in touch with me tonight, anybody who wants a coin, I can ship them out tomorrow. I usually ship them out on Saturdays. Yeah, TGIF. And I don't normally say that because generally I like my job. I'm not usually looking forward to Fridays, but this is a Friday well-earned. 
All right, so it's 9.53. Uh, let's see if I had anything else on the docket. I don't want to, I, I never like going longer than is comfortable because then I feel like I'm just rambling. Um, cheers, Bill, to tough weeks and enjoying a dram. So here's the thing. I'm going fi- to finish off the 16 and then I'll probably pop off. But once again, just a quick reminder, anybody in the chat, join the Discord because it's just good in there. <laughs> a lot of people chatting like all weekend long or all week long. Uh, my kids are actually not named Booker, Booker, and Booker. They're uh, male Booker, female Booker, and female Booker. I actually have two girls. Bookette and Bookette. Uh, I am a I am in software. I'm a director of development, which means I'm a manager of managers of software engineers. So I um I have a bit of stress in my life, but it's fun. I will unfortunately not introduce my wife. She does not want anything to do with the channel, at least visually. She has to hear me um, talk about it enough. So at the end of the stream, I will shoot the green whiskey, just since people are asking. Hmm. So I think it's worth going over this for a minute. So the 16, the 16 is actually my least favorite of the three which is kind of surprising to say. Um, I do have, yeah, I mean, I have a boss, of course. Everybody has a boss. If you don't have a boss, then the shareholders are your boss. But um, yeah, I mean, ultimately my boss usually just kind of leaves me to, to run the show a bit. So I, I've told most of my bosses at one point or another, I've said, leave me alone and I'll make you money. <laughs> and most of them do that because I tend to do that. Um, but I, I don't want to keep going too much into this. So anyway, Here's the 12, here's the 14, and here's the 16. If I had to put them in order, the 14 is the forerunner to me. However, for whatever reason lately, I've been really finding myself drawn towards fruity whiskeys. So, excuse me. I'm uh, not sure what that might say about me, <laughs> but fruity whiskeys have really been kind of my my go-to lately. Um, the 12 and then the 16. So... I don't know. I'm a little surprised. I think they changed things up a little bit too much with the 16 to the point where, don't get me wrong, all three of them are good. It's just, I think the 14 is stellar, and then the 12 is really good, and then the the 16 is pretty good. So that would be my my guess. All right. So 9.56. Let's let's see what else is going on in the chat. I'd love to push it a couple more minutes because I I think this is actually going pretty good. is it the green tie? Is that why? Uh, let's see. People are talking bookers, bookers, bookers. Get a new wife. <laughs> Bookerina. <laughs> Bookerina. I wish my, uh, I should have named my daughter's middle name that. Um, let's see. You said you don't have any managers under you. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I don't. I technically don't have any managers underneath me. I should. Um, my company has a newer policy where any manager has to have at least three directs. And right now, the only thing that would make sense is for me to have two direct uh, reports if I were to insert a layer of managers there. So I would rather have, I have some like 17 or 20 people underneath me right now, depending on the day. Um, And there's definitely two of them that I would love to make managers, but there's no third group that makes logical sense to have a manager. So anyway, all right, let's, let's get back to whiskey. I honestly would talk all day about work, but you guys don't want to hear that any more than I do. Uh, is Red Spot available? Just asking for the community. I've seen it like once. Um, I would guess that they're going to make it a little bit more available. But one thing you'll learn about whiskey is that the more that they can drive up scarcity and pretend that something is rare, the better off they are because they sell a lot more of them. Um all right, let's see. I know the channel is called The Whiskey Dick and everything, but have you ever considered doing a special episode on something else, maybe tequila or rum or something? Uh, the best that I've considered doing, other than like an April Fool's joke, would be to do... Um... <laughs> Eric, I knew you were going to make that joke. I knew it was going to happen. I had no doubt in my mind. Um... Wait a minute. How did you... It's almost like you saw the sexton. All right, somebody asked me to mix the two of these. Instead of shooting the green, I'm going to mix them. Um, Anyway, so I was answering a question. Uh, Oh, yeah. So the only thing I've considered doing is like bourbon barrel beers because that's generally what I drink when I go out 
if they have them available. I'm almost always getting a bourbon barrel beer. Um, so I, I actually wasn't going to entertain this idea. Ha. But because the Sexton is made by a female blender, and today is International Women's Appreciation Day or whatever it is, I'm going to do that. Um, this episode will be coming out in a couple of weeks. I actually just filmed it two nights ago. I think I was editing it last night. So, all right, let's see. Mick Sexton doesn't want... <laughs> I mean, I like to keep these things to an hour, but if you guys are having fun, I don't necessarily have to. Um, when is the Barton's Warehouse Collapse Special Edition coming out? I've heard mixed uh, reportings on that. But I can almost guarantee you there's going to be that. And there'll probably be, I forget what the place was, the, the one that went up with a, a tornado. That will almost certainly do it. All right. <laughs> you know, people, people complain. All right. I'm trying to think of how to word this. So people complain about pouring out of this bottle. And they have a point. They really do. Because... I myself have spilled out of this. But while I was reviewing the, the whiskey, I said something, I, I didn't say this on the video, but I was like thinking about this because I, I, of course, was doing some research and like almost everybody was like, oh, it's pain to, to pour out of this thing. So I'm like, I don't, I don't understand. How can people have a problem pouring out of this? And I went to pour it and it was fine, except I was pouring slow enough because I was trying to make sure that I was proving myself right by not spilling. And as I poured it slowly, of course, it just dribbled down the side. So totally right. Yeah. I mean, the bottle looks cool, but it's really, really impractical. All right. All right. What did you spoil, Dan? Oh, uh, no, it's all right. Don't worry about it. Have you tried Goose Island Bourbon Barreled Beer? I have not tried their Bourbon Barreled Beer, but I do like Goose Island. All right, keep the stream going. All right, I'll go for a little bit longer. I, I don't like to push things till where it's like I'm being boring either. I like to always leave the audience wanting more. Um, all right, so what should we do here? Uh, keep it going another 20 minutes. I've heard that before. <laughs> All right, Sexton and Napog. Cheers to uh, whoever suggested this. I think it was Dan. Hmm. It's like Napog, except a little bit grainier. Um, well, and then the finish, that's interesting. Okay. I always like mixing stuff. It's, it's interesting. Although the problem is they never sit long enough to really, like, mix or blend together. Um... It tastes like this, by the way, new use for the whiskey hat, is that it's, uh, you know, good at balancing. So very, very important. You should buy yourself a coin. <laughs> buy one from the Scotch Test Dummies while you're at it. They have really cool designs. Um, so the Napog Castle, and Eric Waite actually has the probably one of the coolest coins. I should bring, like, everybody's coins on here so I can show them off. Um, so anyway, it tastes like the Napog, and then it's a nice blend of the two where you're getting... Um, Hold on. If I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this right. Hold on. I did have an extra bottle, uh, glass over here for the inevitable bookers that does come out, but I didn't use it, so I'm going to use it for this. I'm going to do some science. Yep, and I spilled it while I was pouring there. So you're right. Thing spills like every single time. And I don't have a paper towel in my pocket like I usually do. Now, what I do need to do is if I'm going to bother playing, I need to play with power. <laughs> so, let's go with the power glove. Is uh, DJ Bacon still in the house? Or is uh, Go Habs in here? I haven't seen Go Habs, actually. Let's not lie, you haven't tried that before, none of us have. Um, I'm not sure what you're talking about, Bourbon Saint, I'm sorry. I don't want to just sit here and read. All right. Our music and whiskey episode will feature shitty Metallica stuff. <laughs> the Sexton is all, yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, I love, the, I love that you guys all saw me spill. That makes it so much better. It actually showed up on stream. All right, so here we go. Let's, let's do some science. Um, all right, so we got the blend, which I'm actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I'm going to just swirl it while I'm trying the other ones. 
so it can properly really distribute itself. So it'll be the best I can possibly do as far as really blending it. Eric, have a great night, buddy. I'm glad that you uh, hung out as long as you did. Um, where can people buy my coins? Thank you, Scott. You're the man. Uh, they can send me an email at thewhiskeydick at gmail.com. Or if you don't want to have to remember that, check the description of the video. It'll be in there. Um, Scott, where can people buy your coins? Uh, DJ Bacon is still there. <laughs> His name is DJ Beacon. I do know that, but uh, for anybody who's new to the stream, I call him DJ Bacon because it's better. All right, so here is the sexton. It's going to be a bit of a uh, rub your stomach, pat your heads thing, trying to keep the swirling while I'm <laughs> nosing and tasting here. All right, so the nose on this is pretty pretty nice. It's not um, it's not terribly complex. It just smells good, you know. Like I'm at that point in the night where it's not nuance. It's just, do I like this? Do I, or do I not? <laughs> I feel like I'm doing some sort of a magic show. I'm like sitting here drinking, swirling, dressed like an idiot. Um, the taste of this is really good. <laughs> Appreciate that, Scott. Um, anyway, all right. So the taste of this is really good. It's uh, I believe this has like a sherry influence as well. Um, yes, it totally does. Actually, I'm very excited for you guys to watch the episode on the Sexton because I, I did some really good research on that one. I found some pretty cool stuff out that I, I don't think is super common knowledge. Um, and I presented it on the episode as well. So that'll be a fun one to look forward to. Um, so Richie, it is, it is the same email for PayPal. Uh, but yeah, so if anybody wants to, um, you can send me an email. I, I don't, well, hold on. So Richie, technically no. If you do paypal.me, M-E, uh, Mike Echo, slash the whiskey dictionary, that is where you can send me money. Um, there is one for the whiskey D-I-C, but that's actually a different account. So don't, don't send it there. Um, just make sure to include your address. And uh, coins are $10 a piece. Um, shipping is $350 within the US. It's uh, $10 to the US or Mexico. And then it's $14 basically everywhere else. So um, I would love to sell a bunch of those because I, I really, really want to do the second batch, but I can't justify it until I sell more of the first batch. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry. Is it too close? It might be too close. Can you buy what, James? <laughs> the power glove? <laughs> hmm. Okay. <laughs> Green Morangi. <laughs> That's pretty funny. You gotta open Discord. Oh. I have the I have my phone over here. Um Okay, whatever. There's a bunch of people asking for, for coins and stuff. That's that's great. Um, so yeah, just check the description. All the information's there. All right, so this has been mixing long enough. This has a sherry influence. This tastes a little bit fruity. Um, and then, like I said, I've mixed this about as long as it goes. Sorry to hit the microphone. Let's see if this has an influence from both of them. I would guess so. Still smells the same. I'm going to drink some water first because that, that really just tasted like the, the pog. All right. Man, it's amazing how much uh, drinking whiskey can just fry your taste buds, especially after you've been talking for an hour and 10 minutes or so. <laughs> DJ Bacon, you have a really good point. He says, imagine anybody tuning in right now, seeing Bill <laughs> swirling whiskey, wearing a you know, wearing that with the, the hat and the bow tie and just having no clue what the hell's going on. Uh, I love the idea. ADHD fishing, I uh, I'm not surprised that you left for a minute. <laughs> oh, um Maritime. Maybe you, uh, maybe you're onto something there. Maybe, maybe you are spoiling a surprise. <laughs> hey, Doug, thank you, buddy. Oh, you drinking it with me? I love it. That's great. 
I love that you even have the stuff to just randomly do that together. That's that's really fun. So Doug says it tastes like penderin, which I'm not sure what that is. Um, Joe, the 16 is would be my third choice of the of the three. The 14 would be the first choice. 12, so 14, 12, 16 in that order. Hmm. Okay, that's pretty fun. That didn't turn out too bad. Um, I'm trying to decide if it's worth doing, though. Let me just itch with the power glove. Oh, hold on. Let me, let me, uh, boop. All right. All right. Sorry. Um, it's tough. It doesn't taste that much different. It really is overpowered by the Napog. I don't know. Do I have anything else? I have some more Irish whiskey I could always get into. All right, Vapor Snake, let's do this. Sneak peek at some whiskeys that are coming up. So, real easy, actually. Tomorrow is Bushmills Black. Because uh, if you guys have watched this stream this long, you deserve to know everything. So, tomorrow is Bushmills Black. Next Wednesday is Egan's Single Malt. And then the next Saturday is Sexton. Excuse me. There is going to be a special episode on St. Patrick's Day, but I'm not telling you what it is yet. My genuine hope is that this has significant potential to go viral. And I do not say that lightly because I'm a student of YouTube and I know what that takes. This is extremely high potential for that. We'll see. Um, or it might just totally flop. We'll see. Anyway, so then the Sexton, and then we've got Egan's um, Vintage Grain, which I uh, believe is like a 10-year-old. Um, and then we have the Powers Gold. Then we're going to have Napog Castle. And then we're going to have Glendalo 13 Mizunara Cask, which, let me tell you, holy crap, it's good. Oh, man, I'm, I'm really, really excited to do that review because I, I had it... Um, a couple nights ago just to be like okay what am i getting myself into and oh it's so good it's really really good uh it's like a 100 bucks though um which like you know and I, I don't say this lightly that's worth it it's really really good but you guys should uh no this video is not going viral <laughs> there will never be a hundred uh, an hour long video that goes viral people don't have that kind of attention span um Okay, just look at what uh, Dan sent on Discord on stream. All right, right, will do. Anyway, all right, so I'm going to pop off. i uh, kind of out of things to say. I did my mix. I'm going to pop on Discord and go have a conversation with anybody who decides to show up. So um, I'll probably be on there for the next, like, 25 minutes or so. If you want to get on, it'll be pretty awesome. So thank you, everybody, for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary, and I hope you have a great rest of your night. Stop the stream.